Pakistan's worst ever natural disaster. More floodwaters threatened to engulf two towns in southern Pakistan on Saturday, a month after the disaster began, as the United Nations warned that tens and tens of thousands of children risked death from malnutrition. The floods are Pakistan's worst ever natural disaster in terms of the amount of damage and the number of people affected. With more than six million people forced from their homes, about a million of them in the last few days as the water flows south. The disaster has killed more than 1,600 people and inflicted billions and billions of dollars of damage to homes, infrastructure, and the vital agricultural sector and stirred up anger against the U.S.-backed government which has struggled to cope. Floodwaters are beginning to recede across most of the country as the water flows downstream. But high tides in the Arabian Sea meant they still posed a threat to towns and Sindh province, such as Thada, 45 miles east of Karachi. Water had broken the banks of the Indus near Thada and also broken out of a feeder canal running off the river, compounding the danger, said a relief commissioner in the southern province of Send. The water has not reached the town up until now, but it is approaching. Tens and tens of thousands of people have poured out of the Delta town, which normally has a population of some 300,000, after authorities told people to leave. The floods began in late July after torrential monsoon downpours over the upper Indus Basin. The death toll was expected to rise significantly as more bodies of many missing people were found, the Disaster Management Authority has said. Even before the floods, Pakistan's economy was fragile. Growth, forecast at 4.5% this fiscal year, is now predicted at anything between 0 and 3 percent, that is, if all goes well, or at best. The floods have damaged at least 7.9 million acres, about 14 percent of Pakistan's entire cultivated land, according to the United Nations Food Agency. Total cost and crop damages is believed to be at least $2.86 billion dollars. United Nations said aid workers were becoming increasingly worried about disease and hunger, especially among children in areas where even before the disaster, acute malnutrition was high. We fear the deadly synergy of waterborne diseases, including diarrhea, dehydration, and malnutrition, said a senior UNICEF official. Estimated 72,000 children are at high risk. A United Nations humanitarian coordinator said the international response to the disaster must be much more assertive. If nothing is done, an estimated 72,000 children currently affected by severe malnutrition in the flood affected areas are at high risk of death. The floods are another huge problem for a government which came to power after the 2008 election, restoring civilian rule after nearly a decade. As well as grappling with economic problems, the government has been struggling to stop Islamist militant violence. Early on Saturday, militants being questioned at a security agency building in the northwestern city of Peshawar overpowered two guards and took them hostage, a military spokesman said. The militants later surrendered and the guards were freed. There were no casualties. Shawa, the main city in the northwest where there have been numerous militant attacks, has not been flooded, but flash floods caused extensive damage in parts of the northwest. The United Nations, the Pakistani army, and a host of local and international relief groups have been rushing aid workers, medicine, food and water to the affected regions, but are unable to reach many people. In the United States, 
an ally which regards Pakistan as a frontline state in its war against the Taliban in Afghanistan. Concern has been growing that Islamist charities linked to militants have increased their involvement in flood relief efforts, possibly exploiting anger to gain recruits. And yes, that's a possibility also. And again, this is Pakistan's worst ever natural disaster. On all these are more signs. Because everything is connected and everything is numbered. Isaiah chapter 25 O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. 2. For Thou hast made of a city a heap, of a defensed city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city, it shall never be built. 3. Therefore shall the strong people glorify Thee, the city of the terrible nations shall fear Thee. 4. For Thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. 5. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers, as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. 6. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well refined. 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. 8. He will swallow up death in victory, and Lord God Almighty will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. 9. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And yes, again, all these are more signs of the end times, transition days, which is a great process going on all around the world, every day.